For latest top tips, reviews and advice, please subscribe below. Hello and welcome to At Walls Outdoors with me, Mike. Today I'm giving you a bit of a review video on a brand new tent from Van Gogh. So with me here today, I've got the Van Gogh Lismore Air 700 DLX. So the Lismore 700 Deluxe is basically a kind of a inflatable tent made to hit a very keen price point, but without necessarily compromising on features. And actually, to a certain extent, goes above kind of a lot of other competitors' features for that entry price point. It's worth mentioning that there's a, a whole range of Lismore tents, be it from Pold to Polycotton. Um, they do the 700 DLX in the air, as we see here. I've done a separate video for the Pold version as well, so you can get a bit of a, con a contrast for how one looks over the other and the overall space. And they're exactly the same in everywhere, just as mentioned, it's the structure you have, the Pold versus the air. At this point, I'd like to point out, essentially, the Lismore in the, seven, the DLX model is different to the other Lismores. There's three main features that distinguishes the DLX to the normal, <clears throat> apart from the size. One, we've got webbing straps on the front and back to give it extra tension as we see fit. The other thing as well is the DLX benefits from a rain safe canopy door, which we will touch on in just a moment. Uh, and last but not least is the door configuration at the front here as well. There's a little bit more flexibility. So those are the main three things that are different from that to the range and we'll cover those throughout the video itself. The first thing obviously is, is air, so it's quick and easy to pitch. Uh, pitch this model on my own in the best part of 12 minutes. Nice, simple to do. And you can always check that out on our Atwals video, Atwals YouTube channel. The, it, the concept is designed that, again, one person can do it on their own. Each beam is done individually and as standard you get included a manual stirrup pump. You've got Vango's airspeed valve, so it's a valve system that is unique to them, allows you to physically bayonet lock the pump directly onto it, so you remain the pressure, and you get a live pressure gauge on there as well. And the stirrup pump, as I said, comes supplied as standard. All the beams are the same, so again, it's worth probably having a spare just in case. It's better to have than not need, than need and not have. Um, and again, it's from a size point of view, it's really quite nice. Technically, they call it a 700. For me, I'd probably say it's more of a true six, but a, a spacious six, you know, a six that you're more than happy with. And we'll see that when we come to the bedroom section a bit later on. In theory, essentially, it's a free zone tent, sleeping, living, and in a front open, closed awning area. So again, you get the best of pretty much all the worlds there. And one thing, space is one thing you're not lacking with this particular tent. In many ways, it kind of almost takes over in years gone by from things like the Tega um, and the sort of Summerton and that kind of ilk. It's a really nice sort of thing, it's 440 wide, so it's a really good sort of width um, and obviously it's good depth as well. I think the thing that impressed me most is the sheer size you have in each section. They have really thought about it quite nice and neatly. The new mineral green color is a really nice um, kind of material. It's their Sentinel material. Generally, it's got a waterproof rating of 3,000 mil, so it's you know, well waterproof for sure. Uh, and the other thing as well is from a Denier point of view, looking around that 70D, 68D, somewhere around that region, uh, we've changed the concept of, it gone more down to an accurate sort of grams per square meter kind of part. One of the big talking points actually is the fabric. So what uh, Vanga really tried to do is actually um, change the way that they've got a dive material. So with this particular model, they've gone to, from rather than dyeing the actual material itself, they actually dyed the thread and then spun it and woven it. This is a big improvement, mainly because uh, you, the color is throughout the thread, rather than actually with the material tends to be just on the outer and inner coating, because it can't get in between. This is important mainly because as over a tent's lifespan, literally the UV will strip away kind of that outer coating that you see, and then obviously it starts to fade and deteriorate and look a bit tired, should we say. By dyeing the thread, what you get is more like a carrot, whereas the fabric otherwise is more like a radish, the outer layer and that core white. So when you sort of cut it in half and when we lose that outer layer to the UV, you're not necessarily seeing the white you would see with the, carrot, uh, the radish, you see the pure color all the way through of the carrot. So generally you get better color retention. The other sort of side to that as well is actually doing that process of dyeing the thread Generally, it saves about 60% um, of water than it would doing it the other method. So it's a more eco-friendly way of doing it. Hence why they're calling this their color lock eco. So you've got the locking color due to the thread part. 
and then the eco of, of saving all the water. So it's a nice little concept and something I think I would like to see them sort of roll out more, certainly in their whole kind of um, Sentinel Experience collection, that's kind of what we are seeing. Also things that are a little touches I do quite like is the two tonal kind of guy ropes. So you've got um, a main colour for sort of the footing, i.e. trip hazard, in kind of a nice Van Gogh orange, and then a sort of floating part. So again, it's not too offensive, and it does make the Van Gogh logo pop a little bit as well. Crystal clear windows throughout the tent as well, as you can see. And then when you get to the main body, you have then curtains which toggle up into place to get that privacy as and when you need it. With the DLX, you also, as I mentioned earlier, you've got a rain safe canopy door on the side. So you can come and go from this section, um, rain or shine, and not have to worry about the water coming down and going straight into the tent itself. On this side door as well, as we've got a full on mesh um, ventilation point. And what you find actually is you could kind of semi create a little bit of a mini canopy by buying some additional king poles. The little pegging points basically sling it through there and it gives you a bit more of a shelter out of it. It's a little bit trickier due to the fact you've got the canopy, but you still can kind of utilize that. And we'll come to the flex flexibility of that mesh in a second on the inside. One thing I do like the fact is any entrance you go into kind of Lismore, you have got a trip free access if you wish. So all the doors drop down so you can get wheelchairs, push chairs in and out quite happily and not have to worry about it. Airflow is definitely one of the key features of the tent itself, either being a, a non-breathable material like polyester with a mesh side, low level ventilation uh, beneath the windows and a ventilation point at the back. You want to have a circulation there to keep it fresh and airy inside and obviously help to reduce condensation. Final thing I want to touch on before we head inside the tent is the sort of front door scenario. So we've touched on the fact we've got weapon straps to give a bit more tension front and back. But also the front door allows you to kind of create a setup that you want. Having the flexibility, you can open it from right to left or left to right, works really quite nicely. Uh, and actually to the point where you can almost bring it into the middle, not that you probably would. Um, but for me, one of the things I do like is the fact that actually you can drop it down all the way and sort of like sling it in a pile in the corner. Now what that kind of creates is a more open feel to it, rather than having a big sausage roll um, going up the side of the tent, it just seems a little bit more streamlined and looks a bit nicer in my opinion. So yeah, you can drop the door fully down to the bottom. Again, it means that essentially what we can do is almost tuck it in out of the way. Normally I'd probably fold it to be a bit of a nicer job, but for the time being, I'm just gonna sling it in there like so. And then that, you see it opens up the whole tent a bit lot more, brings the outside directly in. It's just almost a nicer place to kind of sit, relax, uh, and then you haven't got, like I said, as earlier, that little sausage roll kind of on the side there as all, but you still got the flexibility of kind of doing that. But I'll tell you what, let's kind of actually bring the camera inside and talk for, through some more features that that Lismore has to offer. So now we're looking straight down the middle of it, you can kind of appreciate for the sheer amount of width you got in here. You know, it's really great, really generous, and even when you've got like a table set up like this, you know, you've still got plenty of room on the outside. I think, the, like I said, on the outside, the thing that I probably not baffles me but I'm impressed with most is the sheer depth of the main canopy being this your wet area your cooking area wherever you want to kind of make it you know, you've got plenty of room in here you can see happily with a even a chair in here there's a whole load of space for a sort of cooking unit so it really does create uh, a nice kind of environment I can see it for ages actually um, but generally throughout the tent as well space is one of those key things headroom height while I'm six foot two I can stand up more and happily in the middle here and even when you get to kind of the corners, oops, so they see, <laughs> merely not right in the corner, but things a bit lower down like furniture, you can pretty much get it as close as you've got to get it really to there. And that's basically down to kind of the pre-angled beams. It's uh, The beams itself are a sort of decent sort of uh, centimetre, I believe a 13 centimetre beam, so they're a little bit more oversized than your normal beams, so that's a really quite nice additional thing. And as we kind of come into the sort of the main kind of living section, we've got this divisional door. The door itself, you've got sort of two windows either side of the door, and the door uh, also has the mesh built into it as well. So what you can actually have, this is going to be your main kind of bug barrier against whatever is coming in at night. By zipping that down like so, what you can actually then do is have the airflow in. So you can have a lantern on, on at night time. You can then roll that down nice and neatly in there. There's a little sort of retainer uh, toggle as well to keep it on. So you've got your bug protection directly from the front. You've got the same going on from the side as we've previously noted. So 
Okay, it just keeps things all nice and easily from that point. With the door entrance as well, you haven't got any trip hazards coming into it. And the joys of having the zip as well is you can bring it halfway, get a bit of privacy, but still allow airflow in. The trip-free hazard is a really nice thing, especially how wide this door is. I think that's probably one of the things. It's, it's quite inviting, even though it's, you've still got obviously a little bit of corners from one edge to another. I think the overall span of that works really nicely. And it's also the, how they've gone about actually fixing it up. So not only have you got toggle points in the corners, you've also then got um, an eyelet either side and there's also normally a probably a valve patch in the middle. So you've got a really good seal against it to make sure that you're not getting any weather directly coming in. And not only is that with the front door, same premise with the side door. Same option that you can obviously really help to stop getting anything in as you see. As we've kind of in the main area, we've got a sort of double bay section. So two nice big panels, plenty of space inside. And again, even if you were to bring like a table and chairs in here, you still have an ample amount of room to have a little storage organizer or things like that. So that's where I think it works really nicely. New carpet color for the uh, new model. And it's designed, it's gonna match the curtains in terms of the pattern. It's one of those sort of optical illusions of cubes, <laughs> which is always quite, uh, or hexagonal, yeah, lots of illusions anyway. We've got on the, this side over here, we've got a really nice PVC window. All the curtains in the main living area are toggle up basically. So you can bring them up sort of halfway or fully at the top if you want to get that complete um, kind of, you know, seal or privacy against it. So you've got a little bit more flexibility. You have got low level ventilation points as well. So obviously that's to help with airflow. It's situated beneath every single window. Of course, then you've got your mesh window directly down here with that rain safe canopy door. Other points to note is actually we've got a, um, a toggle points located in the roof section. So you can actually have uh, things like a hanging lantern, not only kind of in the main living area, in kind of the front section and also above the bedrooms. So again, that gives you the, the ability that you can more than happily um, have a hanging lantern point. It doesn't matter where you want it situated. In the main section, what we also benefited from is actually cable entry points. So we've got one located normally at the front in the sort of front corner, and then one in from the side. Again, so allow we can have a main hookup quite happily and easily. And we can always run that along little Velcro tabs leading to the hanging point. That works really quite nice and neatly. Or failing that, we can run it from the back of the bedrooms. The bedroom itself, you probably leave in place. There's no reason to put, take it in or out, even though it is color coordinated, just in case you do um, necessarily need to know where it is. Dividers really between the sections give you a sort of, you know, your own independent space. Now it's really designed for a seven, so it's designed for a two, two, and then a three in the middle. Personally, I don't really see it that way. I see it more of as two, a two, and a very generous two. So your master bedroom is going to be in the middle. It's a bit wider, a bit more comfortable for your adults. Whereas your two birth bedroom on that side and two birth bedroom on that side, it's more kids oriented. It's a little bit more cozier, should we say? But what you with the dividers, you can have a little bit more play in there. So you, even if the dimensions aren't quite you know what you want them to be there's a little bit of room naturally with kind of the toggle points because they are elasticated so it will give a little bit we've also got little storage pockets in the side of the bedrooms as well to help sort of declutter the main part of the tent it means things like at night time you put your phones and keys and that sort of stuff easily accessible so if you've got to find a torch you know exactly where to look Vango also feature tbs which is tension band system in their products so what you find is you have a little kind of um Webbing strap that you put up internally creates this little triangle point from the top out to the sides, gives you a bit more stability. So when you have winds coming from a certain direction, it basically braces that and keeps the residual, the structural strength to the actual um, tent itself. But for personally, I'd probably only put those in if you leave the tent unattended for a period of time, not necessarily while you're in it, because naturally it is a little bit of a hazard from that point of view. So it's one of those sort of safety nets you can add in at a later date. Let's bring the camera in and we're going to talk through some more features up close and personal. So the first thing we'll do as we come in is actually look at the overall depth in the canopy here. We've got a really nice kind of depth. You've got the, um, obviously, even when you've got a table set quite nice and neatly in there, it's worth pointing out that this is, this is a pre-production sample. So there aren't going to be any curtains in the front awning section. Um, so it is just purely windows, but then again, everything out the front really, it doesn't really make much of a difference, I feel. It'd be nice to have, but I think, I think again, for the price point, I think you can sort of justify why it's not necessarily included. Then we've got um, 
obviously the mesh windows either side so that works really quite nicely as well and then that little flat entrance so again no trip hazard directly in windows great clarity throughout them uh some obviously with heat they do fall out so that's one thing to bear in mind but also it's a low level ventilation points we've got a feature down there to help increase airflow there's an extra bedroom you can actually buy um, if you wanted to put it in the main living area so uh, make it essentially a, a nine berth um, or a, a more of a true eight so you pop that during the daytime uh, sorry nighttime maximize the space of that uh, and then utilize it during the daytime and move almost the bedding into the main section there we've got the rain safe canopy door so you can see kind of the canopy on the external sides of things uh, and obviously allows the airflow quite nice and neatly the bedrooms have got sort of their darker mid um, nights down bedrooms so it's something a bit darker than your normal kind of thing it's not going to be blackout but it's quite nicer to have and hopefully cut out a bit more of early morning light as mentioned previously you've got the dividers which say toggle in place um, and even they are color coordinated storage pockets located down the side as previously mentioned and then we've got ventilation on the back sort of mid-level and then also high level and as you see there we've got kind of an airbed in situ so that's where i think really more it's going to be it's, that's a, about a 160 wide airbed so it's a wide old airbed that um so it's more designed really for um <clears throat> like i said normal kind of you can probably just about squeeze the camp bed in there i'm pretty sure i did the video review of the 700 pole version of this that we did actually have a uh, camp bed in there albeit maybe touching the back just marginally I think all in a way it looks and sits, it looks really nicely. And it's probably one of the more, it's probably the second most tent I'm, well, second tent I'm probably most excited about from um, Van Gogh, certainly for the 23 season. Just I think from a price point, it sort of tends to, you know, give a lot. Um, you know, it's good value for money, which is all main things. It doesn't necessarily break the bank. You've got tons and tons of room, especially for those rainy days. Um, but, it still packs down to a, you know a bit more manageable um, lump than it would be, say for example, like the the Van Gogh Ventanis, which is a different level again from everything from spec to everything really. So it is a nice alternative. For more information about this product, be it pack size, floor dimensions, individual features, um, or just specification, feel free to check the link below this video. It'll take you straight through to our website. We've got more information on things like packs, um, all that little bits. Generally as well, we've got things like um, our pitching video uh, and all the accessories you can look at. I think one thing to bear in mind as well is as standard, you actually get the footprint included with the tent now. So that is about an 80, 90 pounds worth of footprint included as standard with the tent. So you kind of got to take that in consideration when you compare say this against another tent uh, and the footprint covers both sections. So you get one for the front section as well as the back section as well. So again, that's a really nice little extra um, that a little mixture of cherry on top, should we say. By always let us know what you think of the video as well, uh, what, and video, but also the product. It's always good to have kind of feedback from yourselves uh, regarding this and with what things you like, what things you don't like, what things you don't work. Good or bad, it's always great to pass that back on to Van Gogh. But like I said, more information, let us know. Hopefully you found this helpful, and we very much look forward to seeing you again in the next Atwells Outdoors video review.